भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय so today um is the disappearance day of narottam das tarko so we wanted to have a look at his life and times um it's quite a long uh, session he's quite an extraordinary personality so hopefully we'll get through uh, all of it and i like to seek your blessings so that we can um, appreciate a little bit about this incredible personality and wanted to seek his blessings so that we can um dwell a little bit into his uh, wonderful pastimes so this is a prelude actually um before he was born once when goranga decided to go from puri to bandavan he stopped in the village of ramakeli to see rupa and sanatan this is where rupa and sanatan goswami lived so and at that time um nityananda was with him and he, he began to shout in ecstasy oh narottam narottam this is before narottam's appearance from this the intimate devotee especially nityananda knew that a great personality would soon be soon take birth because narottam naro nar means man uttam means the highest topmost person however on this occasion mahabubu his ecstasy was far deeper he used to have these ecstasies but this was way be, beyond anything that nityananda has seen before and he was nityananda was a little scared so he asked uh, goranga why why are you so uh, so much in ecstasy so, uh, he was running around like a madman <laughs> it said goranga said that across the padma in uh, kethuri narottam will be born and he will be the recipient of goranga's intense love which goranga was going to deposit in the padma and this great soul will soon appear even within our lifetime so the next morning chaitanya mahapu went to bathe and he deposited his love in the padma which overflowed the river overflowed so at that time the personality of Pad- the river came before chaitanya mahapu because she understood that goranga has deposited his love and it's supposed to be delivered to narottam so she asked him how will i know who to give it to and goranga said that that person who when he enters your water causes you to overflow as i have made you overflow and he's he will be greatly jubilant he is that person that you have to give this love to so chaitanya mahapu's own love has gone into narottam so goranga left this world 1524 and narottam was born in 1520 approximately these are not exact dates these are approximate dates so fast forward to when narottam was a teenager so we'll go back to his birth but we just fast forwarding when he was a teenager he had a dream nityananda appeared to him saying tomorrow as the sun begins to rise you should take your bath in the padma river at that time you will receive the totality of gora prema or love of god when narottam woke up uh he was amazed by that dream and he immediately complied he went to uh the padma and he entered the padma it it overflowed and he was absolutely jubilant so the padma realized that this is narottam this is the one i have to give the goranga's prema to and just then goranga appeared before his eyes and affectionately embraced embraced him as their bodies merged this isn't the merger of the impersonalists by the way <laughs> he felt gauranga's very essence engulf his soul 
it is said that at that moment, Narottam's natural dark complexion turned to molten gold, the color of Goranga. <laughs> and this place is called Prema Talikat. It's on the Padma River in Bangladesh. I haven't been there. We haven't been there. Uh, but pilgrims visit this uh, very holy place. So, uh, starting from his birth, on the banks of Padmavati River in the town of Keturi, in the month of Magh, on a day of Shukla Panchami, 1520, Narottam Das Taku took his birth. His father was king, Krishnananda Tat, and his mother's name is Narayani Devi. And I think this is the same Narayani Devi who was a small child uh, playing with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. But I need to just uh, double check that. King's older brother, he had an older brother who's called Pushottam, who had a son called Shantosh. So, um, so Narottam had a cousin brother. The wealth and fame of these uh, brothers was beyond compare. They were very wealthy. Now, this, his birth was very auspicious. Many auspicious omens surrounding, surrounded the birth of uh, Narottam. Krishnananda was very pleased. He gave so much donations. And the Brahmins were also very pleased because they saw auspicious signs uh, everywhere. And they prophesied that this boy was a highly perfected soul and a great personality by whose influence many will be delivered. And daily the king's son, he would... Uh, grow more and more effulgent. He's, he said that his body luster was like molten gold. Uh, that's funny, uh, it, it transformed after, but anyway. His eyes were large and shaped like lotus petals. His arms extended to his knees and he had a deep navel. All these bodily symptoms of a Mahapurush, a um, great personality. So the local people, they used to gather around him because he, he, he really did look very, very saintly. King's wife, Narayani, um, she was floating in the ocean of ecstasy. She always kept the boy close to her and was always concerned for his well-being. But the boy was very peaceful and calm. Whenever his mother put him, he would quietly stay put. <laughs> they did the Anpashan ceremony and the king gave a lot for a lot of donations. The astrologer predicted that this his, he will be the greatest of men, and hence he was called Narottam. And they were feeding him because this anpashan is the feeding of the grains first time six, after six months or so. But he wouldn't eat. <laughs> they tried again and again. Narottam just would not eat, and everybody became nervous. The astrologer who was there, he said, don't worry. He only takes Pashad. <laughs> he was six months old, perhaps even less. So then they offered the rice to Lord Vishnu and then the child ate. <laughs> so from then on, he made them a devotee already. Everything had to become Pashad before it was served to Narottam. So this is the influence of the devotee he will have an influence from his very birth on people around him to become devotees of Krishna. He was an adorable boy and endearing to everyone. Soon he was the talk of the town. Just one glance at Narottam was sufficient to cool my mind and chase away all miseries that would be, some of the people would be saying. I've never seen such a gorgeous boy. <laughs> Then he went to school, he had a great memory, and uh, he would just hear a subject once, Shutidar, you know, once, and he would commit it to memory. He learned, mastered Sanskrit, grammar, poetry, rhetoric, and he, he became expert in many, many uh, different subject matters. And because his father was a king, later on he, he, he writes somewhere that uh, that really helped because as a, as a prince, he was uh, he, got, he had exposure to so many different learnings, and he just absorbed it all. Um, then we talked about the incident, what happened in the Padma River. After the glorious incident at the Padma River, he saw as useless any knowledge which did not promote Hari Bachan, and soon lost interest in everything but Krishna consciousness. His mother and yeah, his mother noticed a change in him. 
he'd gone a little crazy from her point of view. And she asked him, what's happened to you? What happened at the gut? So she, he told her, this is what happened. And I want to actually uh, leave home and search for the Lord. Anyway, uh, the parents, of course, became very concerned. They even um, uh, hired a spirit tamer to save this possessed boy <laughs> who suggested some silly treatment like um, eating some goat or something like that, something like that. And uh, the father re even rejected that solution. Day after day, Narutam began to think about of how he could become free from family life and constantly engage himself in the Lord's service. He was indifferent to all material enjoyment. Whereas most children usually like to play, he was uninterested in playing games. At this time, he was very fortunate. He heard the glories of Lord Nityananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from the lips of a pure devotee. And that pure devotee is, is Krishna Das Kaviraj, uh, who is the author of Chaitanya Charitamrit. And uh, every day they would meet. And Krishna Das Kaviraj, he would relay the wonderful pastimes of Gornitai. And um, this is uh, really had a big influence in the life of Narottam Das Thakur. He would happily narrate the pastimes of the Lord in three parts, Adi, Matya, and Antya, which is how he wrote the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And then he would glorify Nityananda, Advaita, all the other devotees. So actually, Narottam Das had a very good idea from Krishna's Kaviraj of all the devotees uh, who were present because they'd left. By the time he was a teenager, they'd all gone. There was no Advaita Charya, Nityananda, Gauranga, they all disappeared. Narottam was lost in the ecstasy of love for the Lord. With eyes full of tears, he joyfully worshipped his Lord privately, oblivious to everything. In this way, he lost all taste for mundane pleasure and could not bear to even hear to even hear topics related to royal pleasures and properties. <laughs> he was the son of a king. Aware of their son's growing apathy for material life, Krishna, Nandan, and... Um, Nanda, uh, Narayani were filled with anxiety and they appointed some guard to, to uh, keep an eye on him, but uh, that really didn't work. Narottam's home became a prison for him. He longed to be free, although he said nothing. He was constantly waiting for the opportunity to leave home. And every day he'd secretly plead desperately for the Lord's help. <laughs> His body became covered with dust as he rolled on the ground, crying, raising his arms in the air. He begged pitifully, Gauranga Nitai, Advaita, my lords, please save me from this hell. <laughs> One day, due to the desire of the Lord, Narottam fell asleep. And in his dream, he saw Gauranga. His splendid beauty could not be compared to gold lightning or anything else of this world. The beautiful curling hair hanging down his back could turn the mind of even the most virtuous woman. His earrings shone brightly and his uh, lotus eyes were the trap of Cupid. So this is Gauranga's description. His smiling face could easily defeat the effulgence of the moon and the beautiful tilak on his forehead could capture one's breath. His uh, graceful hands swept to his knees. His, uh, his chest was very broad, beautiful jeweled garlands hang, hung around his uh, conch-like neck and his deep navel was finely shaped. His thin waist defeated even the lion's thin waist. His knees looked like uh, topped, toppled banana trees and his feet were no more attractive than lotuses. How gorgeous was his threefold loin cloth. Observing the beauty of Mahaprabhu, Narottam shed tears of love and fell at the feet of Gauranga, who said to him, Narottam, look at me. I cannot bear your tears. Don't worry. Go straight to Bandavan. There you will be initiated by my dear devotee, Lokanath. You will happily pour the nectar of the Mahamantra. In. He will happily pour the nectar of the Mahamantra into your ears. I have many plans which are to be served by you. <laughs> in this dream, Narottam saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the banks of the Ganga in Naudri. 
He was enjoying his pastimes with Nityananda, Dvaita, Gadada, Shiva, Sarup, and other associates as they engaged in Sankirtan, while the people of Navadvi witnessed their divine pastimes. Eager to inspect this beautiful scene, even Brahma, Shiva, and other demigods and goddesses mingled with the crowd in disguise. Even the animals and birds were charmed. Those who are born blind were suddenly able to see and rush to observe the extraordinary Sankirtan performance. Seeing this wonderful fun, Narottam wept with joy. On seeing Narottam, Gauranga embraced Narottam and put him in the care of Nityananda and Advaita, who encouraged Narottam to go to Vrindavan. He then woke up. He wept with joy as he began to see many auspicious signs indicating good fortune. In anticipation, he waited, hoping that the fortunate moment would soon arise. So he would uh, stay awake day and night. When will I be able to go to Vrindavan? He would pray, Hari Hari Kabe Haba Vrindavan Vasi. Oh Hari, when will I become a resident of Vrindavan? When will I serve the beautiful divine couple in Vrindavan with tears in my eyes? So they, Krishnananda and Narayan, they could see he was becoming more and more detached. And, and of course they were they were worried because he, he was a prince. He was due to inherit the kingdom. Narottam Das saw that difficulties involved in escaping were becoming more impossible than the Himalayas and thought he might never be able to go to Vrindavan and absorb himself in the worship of Gauranga. So he started to pray. Then some messenger came from the ruler of Bengal informing King Krishnananda that the ruler of Bengal wanted to meet with him. So he went there to Bengal with his older brother. And that was the time when Narottam took advantage and he left home secretly. Uh, and nobody knew that he'd gone. That was at, that day was the full moon day in the month of Kartik. So um, 30th of November, the last day is the full moon day of Kartik, so that's when he, he left for Vrindavan. And he passed through uh, some difficult times. Um, everybody actually would recognize him. <laughs> and sometimes he would get some milk and he would drink it. Sometimes he'd get some fruits on the way and roots. He was constantly hankering to go, get to Vrindavan. So that actually made him forget his hunger and thirst. But after three days, of constant walking and uh, he became very exhausted. He lost consciousness. And at that time, actually, a um, Gauranga appeared to him in a golden skinned Brahmin form. And he supplied him a pot of milk to drink. He didn't recognize Gauranga. He just, again, fell asleep because he was so tired. And while he was sleeping, Rupa Goswami appeared to him in a dream and told him, Gauranga has brought this milk for you. Drink it and move on to Vrindavan. <laughs> Such a fortunate soul. So he did. He, he, um, he was very inspired by that. Uh, at, at that time, actually, some guards caught up with him because the father had sent uh, the scouts and the guards to catch him, bring him back. But he was such a sweet person. His words were so sweet when he was talking to the guards. They realized that this person, even if we take him home, he's just going to go back again to Vrindavan. So we might as well just let him go. <laughs> and he, one of the guards even gave him money for his expenses. So wherever he went, he would hear the glories of Lord Gauranga and Nityananda because uh, those were the paths that uh, they had also uh, treaded down. So many of the villagers would remember Gauranga, Nityananda. So they would encourage him to carry on on his journey. And he would pray to Lord Nityananda, when will Lord Nityananda show his mercy to me and free me from this world of birth and death? By his mercy, one can give up material enjoyment and purify his mind. By, in this way, by the mercy of Nityananda, one can attain Vrindavan. So this was his prayers. His mood was amazing to get to Vrindavan. And if we had even a little fraction of the mood that he has, 
when we go to Bandhavan, we will be very successful. <laughs> we just get onto the cab and just sit and sleep while it's driving to Bandhavan. But this was this is actually the way to go to Bandhavan, like a crew, similar sort of mood. In this way, uh, he finally arrived in Mathura and he enjoyed seeing Keshi Ghat and all the other, not Keshi, Vishram Ghat and all the other different places of pastime there. Um, eventually he came to Bandhavan and the first place he went to see uh, or came upon actually was Radha Govindji temple built by Rupa Goswami, that magnificent structure. And he was in awe and reverence. He was in complete ecstasy. He's finally made it to Bandhavan. And the Vaishnavas, when they saw him, they could recognize this is somebody very special. So immediately, the, everybody had left. Rupa Goswami had gone. Sanatan had left the planet. But Jiva Goswami was there. So they immediately told Jiva Goswami, there's somebody very special who's arrived. And Jiva Goswami understood, this is Narottam. This is the one I've been waiting for. <laughs> so um, Jiva Goswami welcomed him and Narottam fell at his feet and asked for his blessings. And it must have been an amazing sight. And then Jiva Goswami requested him to go and serve Lokanath Goswami. Because Jiva Goswami knew that your spiritual master is my elder, Lokanath Goswami. He was very old. Um, at Lokanaga Swami. And Narottam was probably around 16 at the, at the most, probably less than 16. So he's quite a young boy. Uh, and Lokanaga Swami, he was suffering with separation from Gauranga. Um, and he approached, Narottam approached Lokanath and said, I'd like to serve your lotus feet. And Lokanath Goswami was so humble, he would say to him, well, who are you to serve me? I can't even serve Gauda Nithai, so I can't accept your service. <laughs> he was very humble. Anyway, Lokanath Goswami, Narottam Das Goswami was very persistent as well. And Lokanath Goswami said, okay, chant for one year. So he did, he chanted for a full year near, near Lokanath Goswami, but still Lokanath Goswami wouldn't initiate him, wouldn't uh, take him under his shelter. And then for another year, in the middle of the night, Narottam would clean up the stool and urine of Lokanath Goswami in, in, the, um, in the field. And Lokanath Goswami one day actually checked it out, wondering who's cleaning my waste. And he saw that it was uh, Narottam Das Thakur. So that actually uh, changed his mood a little bit. But still, he wasn't willing to initiate. And then one day he had a dream in um, Lord Chaitanya appeared to Lokanath Goswami. And he said to him, that, I order you to give initiation to Narottam Das. Why aren't you doing it? <laughs> so then immediately Lokanath Das Goswami, he initiated Narottam Das on this uh, full moon day of month of Shravan. Narottam was, uh, he excelled in spiritual practice. Uh, in fact, he dreamt one time that he, that a divine Vaishnavi came to him and told him to serve under the Gopi Champaklata and make special milk for the divine couple. In fact, that is his role actually in the spiritual world. When he woke up, he immediately ran to Lokanath Das Goswami who confirmed this is Radharani and this is your eternal service. These devotees knew. Uh, so sometimes uh, Narottam Das would go into trance and he would boil the milk. He would actually uh, do this service in his mind. And sometimes the milk would overflow and with his bare hands, he would stop the overflow of the milk and put it, put it back. And then when he come out of the trance, his hands actually would be scorched. <laughs> and then he would wear something to cover his hands so that nobody would see, but everybody would know that uh, this is what's happening with this incredible devotee. <laughs> His guru ordered him to study the scriptures, Goswami scriptures and uh, Jiva Goswami. And then there were some two other amazing personalities who joined him, Srivasacharya, Srinivasacharya, who was younger than uh, Narottam, uh, but they used to study together and they were very close friends. And Shyamanandan Prabhu, 
he also came from Godadesh and they studied together. Three, three of them were like the three musketeers of Bindavan. <laughs> Jiva Goswami, he ordered them um, to study, which they did. And then one day he told them, now you've studied enough, you are gonna be the first Sankirtan party. Nityananda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan party. So take these books of the Goswamis to Bengal and start preaching. And they were really ecstatic. They left Bandavan. They had the order of Jiva Goswami. They, they had these treasured scriptures with them. They started on the way to Bengal. So here's Narottam Das Thakur here. I can't remember which one is which now. Actually, you see Narottam. I can't remember who's who. <laughs> but anyway, this, these are Narottam, Srinivas, and Shyamanandan. So they eventually we, they got to a place called Vana Vishnu Rup, Vishnupa Pu. And there actually they got robbed. The books got stolen overnight. The king of that place stole them, thinking it was some treasure, and he hid them. And this actually completely gave them a big thunderbolt. It was such a shock that they lost all the books. And eventually they found out that actually it was a king, King Bir Hambir had stolen them and he'd hidden them in his royal storehouse. So anyway, um, Srinivas Acharya, he, he was left behind to, to find those books, which he eventually did. Shyamananda, he went to Utkala, his, his place of birth in uh, Orissa. And Narottam, he went to Kathuri, where he was born. So they split up at that time. And then after a little while, Narottam in Kathuri, he decided to visit Navadweep because he'd seen it in a dream and he wanted to visit those holy places. So he went, he went to the house of Jagannath Mishra. He met uh, Ishan Thakur, who's the old servant of Sachimata. He met um, the brothers of uh, Srinivas Pand Shrivas Pandit, Sripati and Srinidhi. Srinivas had already left. Shri Srivas had already left the planet. He met uh, Sukhambara, Brahmachari, Damudar Pandit. Then he went to Shantipur. He met the oldest, eldest son of uh, Advaita Chutya, Chutanan. And whenever they'd meet, it'd be a huge emotional meeting because they were all missing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was the youngest Narottam. So they were all very affectionate to him. And he would touch their feet. And he met uh, Hida Chaitanya at Ambika Kalna and at uh, Sap. Tagaram, he met De Janava Devi and Vasudha. And they were so affectionate to him because they knew this is a really special person who's come now. Um, then he, he went to meet Abhiram Gopal. He did a lot of traveling. Then he went to Jagannath Puri and he met Gopinath. He had Darshan of Samadhi of Haridas Thakur. And he went to the place of Gadadhar Pandit's temple. He met the Goswami who was serving there. He went to Kashi Mishra's place. He went to Jagannath Temple, Gundichara Temple, the Jagannath Vallabh uh, Garden. So many different places he visited. And somewhere along that, I may have missed it out, but he went to Ekachakra Dham as well. Oh, it does he come? Okay. Yeah, and he went to Eka Chakra and some old Brahmin, he showed him the, the pastimes of Lord Nityananda in Eka Chakra. <clears throat> these are all really far from each other, these places. We struggle even in the car to go to Eka Chakra because the road is so bumpy. So just imagine the tapasya that Narottam Das Thakur went through to go to these holy places. And we complain when we're in a car. <laughs> And then finally, road is not good, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Road sorry? is not going to Eka Chakra. Road is not good. And when we went, the, mm. the door of the, the door of the cup just opened by itself. You know. <laughs> yes. And uh, I'm, I'm asking, is a Padma River in Eka Chakra? No, no, it's Bangladesh. Yeah, it's Bangladesh. Oh. Okay. Because uh, because in Eka Chakra there is a river also. Yes, that's right. It's mm. not Padma. It's uh, Padmavali. Ma oh Padma. yeah. Yeah, so we went to the, that place also. Yeah, thank you. I remembered, Margie. <laughs> Good memory. 
was it was not that far anyway um I'm, i was thinking about guru maharaj ashram in bindavan is still there yes yes that's <laughs> right anybody anybody is residing in there there is no, rajaram yeah and we oh, yeah. you know, we're hoping to do something renovating there. yeah hopefully yeah, it, it needs renovation yeah yeah no. okay thank you prabhuji okay. <laughs> So uh, then finally he went back to his birthplace and he'd been away for some time. So everybody was so happy to see him again. And, but this time it was a really big event in his life, in the whole, in the life of the whole movement, actually. He started initiating, he initiated his uh, cousin, uh, the brother of his, the son of his uh, uncle. And According to the Prema Vilas, there was another 123 disciples just in that area that are listed, that are his disciples. He was very powerful. Lokanath Das Goswami also wrote to him saying you should establish deity worship, which is exactly what he did. They made the arrangements with his cousin. They made this glorious, glorious temple, um, which is compared only, can only be compared to the Rajasuya Yagya of Maharaj Yudhisthir. So you can imagine how glorious it must have been and this at, on the first uh, this was the first Goa Purnim festival that was held and at that time many devotees came many invitations were sent to all the wonderful devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Advaita and they installed six deities in one go that was the plan and Eventually, devotees started coming from all over the place. This, uh, he was now the king, Shantosh. He made great arrangements for everybody's accommodation. And anybody who'd come, they would be really greeted well with flower garlands and great affection. Each person had their own accommodation. It was just the most uh, glorious way of celebrating. Um, Narottam Das Thakur really set the standard of how to celebrate a, the Gopunim festival. And they would do lots of Sankirtan. And I won't read all this because we're gonna really run out of time, but um, I, they're in the notes. So you can just go through them, the description of the, uh, the temple, the vastness of it, and how they were organizing the festival. And it was all done under the guidance of Janava Devi. She was the senior most Vaishnavi at that time. So really important personality. <laughs> and then the day of the festival itself, uh, it was uh, um, they uh, garlanded Janava Devi, she was the most senior, and then all the other devotees. And then they would sing the Mangala Charan, which is what we sing as well. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same prayer, but. Um, and then the next day they this started. This is the day before Gopunim. That's right. Next day they started the installation ceremony and everybody performed Mahasankirtan. Srinivasacharya was in charge of the Abhishek of the six deities. And this, they're listed, this Gauranga, and there's Vallabh Kanta, Sri Krishna, Sri Rajendra Mohan, Radha Raman, Radha Kanta. Six deities were installed. And they arrived before the installation. And there was a lot of pomp when they arrived. And actually, there's an interesting story how Gauranga appeared. There was a Brahman in Gorpur who, who welcomed Narottam, Gopalpur. Yeah, Gopalpur, yeah. And Narottam went there. And this Brahman was very scared because there was a snake in a, a paddy store, which the Brahman had. And Narottam was fearless. He said, no problem, I'll deal with the snake. He went in there and actually there was no snake. I don't know why they're showing a snake, but <clears throat> there was no snake. And um, Narottam came out of the storehouse with deities of Gauranga. And he said also Vishwarup, uh, no, uh, who's the, the wife of uh, Vishnu, Priya. Vishnu Priya, deity was also, also there. So that's a very interesting way of getting the, the deity. 
and they would perform the Abhishek according to the rules and regulations as set by the six Goswamis themselves. And they would make wonderful offerings. And thousands of pots of offerings were made. And Abhishek was glorious. Um, and then later afterwards, uh, the prashad would be offered to Janava Devi, but she wouldn't take, she would distribute everything. She was an amazing personality. I think we did this in one of the seminars and how she would only take any small amount of uh, um, chanamrit after everybody finished prashadam. She was such an amazing, amazing person. And then she ordered Narottam to do kirtan. Now his kirtan was exquisite uh, and it's described. Um, in fact, this next one. Narottam began to sing a very moving kirtan and was the first exponent of Garanhati, traditional uh, style of kirtan. In his kirtans, he employed the most sophisticated style of rhythms, tal, uh, melodic formats, rag, gestures of emotional expression, abhinaya, developed dance techniques, natyam, natyam. So uh, Karuna, you, you will perhaps be familiar with all of this. I ain't got a clue what this is, but uh, very sounds very interesting. <laughs> yes, Prabhu. So you can give us a demonstration? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I won't be able to do what the Narodanta Sakur has done. <laughs> yeah. And this is all described in this scripture here, Bhakti Ratnakara. Narottam was in, inaugurating what came to be known as Padavali Kirtan, a dramatic singing technique that begins with the glorification of Mahaprabhu and then gradually evolves to Radha Krishna Kirtan in a very beautiful way, often connected through uh, thematic references and melodic consistency. <laughs> I've got no idea what that means. Mahaprabhu now when they were doing this kirtan, the most amazing thing, Mahaprabhu and they had already left the planet to go back to the spiritual, but they came back. They appeared and some, some of the devotees had left 50 years before. <laughs> so they came in the midst of, uh, Mahaprabhu came in the midst of Nalahari, Mukunda, Gauri Das Pandit, Advaita Charya, Nityananda, many others. And they danced in a large company with thousands of castes cast of thousands. All the devotees, especially Srinivas and Narottam, felt complete joy and satisfaction. As the devotees danced more and more, each one felt his or her body become soaked with tears as they completely lost themselves in Narottam's kirtan. So then when they finished the kirtan, it was such an amazing festival. Janava Devi would continue with the festival. She started throwing around the holy colors around on everybody. And it just made it an uh, incredible, incredibly fun festival. Who says we have boring time? Eh? When the twilight came, the bedding ceremony began. So this is the Abhishek for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he was born around noon, uh, no, um, moonrise in the evening. This festival continued for three days and after which um, slowly but surely all the guests left. This festival of Keturi is considered to be very important because it was um, only this, after the Goswami's books were stolen, uh, Narottam did not initially have the assets of books which, with, with which to spread the message of Goswami, but he used a different medium. This he did through the Keturi festival, which eventually became an annual event. So even this, even today they celebrate this every year and continue to be a source of inspiration, even after the Goswami's books were recovered. The direct, another reason why this was very special, the direct disciples of Gauranga and Nityananda and Advaita participated in this festival. It must've been extraordinary. Different styles of Kirtan were sung for the very first time. So, and this was of course initiated by Narottam Das. By gathering Vaishnavas from many different lands in one place, Narottam was able to convey to them the conclusions of Vrindavan Goswamis in an organized way. He was able to get the impressions of the Vaishnav programs as well. So this is a really unique festival. First time 
it's been ever done. Due to his devotion, purity, and wonderful gentle nature, Narottam quickly became the most famous Vaishnav guru. And this brought disciples to him from all over Bharat. And he inspired people from all walks of life, from kings to Brahmins. Of course, that generated a lot of envy. He was born in a, a Kayatha Shudra family. Kayashta Shudra family. So the local Brahmins, they became very envious and they would defame him. That is a Shudra. Shudra is not supposed to initiate Brahmins or anybody in fact. So, and they complained to the king who was actually a pious man called Raj uh, Narsingha. So then the, the Brahminical community, they um, petitioned the king that uh, they should treat this fellow in a hard way because he's breaking the rules. They said that Narottam was a low born person should therefore not have taken sannyas nor should he accept disciples, especially those who are Brahmins by birth, by, like Ganga Narayan Chakravati and Ramachandra Kaviraj. He's very famous, Ramachandra Kaviraj. He wrote some very nice bhajans. And he and Narottam were very close, actually. He's one of his favorite disciples. They insisted that the king inflict a severe punishment on Narottam. So the king sent a message to Narottam, why are you doing this? And Narottam responded, that there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. And I'm happy to debate with you or your Brahmanical uh, friends. And if I'm proven wrong, I will change my habits. I'll change. <laughs> so the king actually, just by that one letter, the king was almost convinced that Narottam is right. <laughs> anyway, he gathered the group of his scholars, the Brahmanical scholars. They went to Kathuri. And at that time, actually, these two disciples of Narottam, Ganga Narayan and Ramachandra, they realized that these people were coming to challenge Narottam. And they didn't want their spiritual master to be disturbed like this. So they devised a really clever plan. <laughs> what they did, they disguised themselves as one as a betel nut uh, seller and the other as a potter. And they set up shop uh, just outside Keturi. So the king's men were coming and they stopped at the shops to buy their supplies. And at that time, the, these two shopkeepers who were actually disciples of Narottam Das Thakur started debating with the scholars. And they spoke in such perfect Sanskrit. And in fact, which only learned men are able to do, how is it that simple shopkeepers in Narottam Das's town are such scholars, they were thinking. If working men are as sophisticated as this, what are the real scholars like? And what is Narottam gonna be like? <laughs> so they actually started to debate with these two um, disciples or shopkeepers as they were thinking, and they lost the debate. The scholars that the king had brought and at that time, uh, as the Royal Academics referred to scripture quote after quote, Narottam's men showed them that they are to taking the citations out of context and misinterpreting them altogether. Totally frustrated, they turned to the king and admitted their pathetic defeat. <laughs> so then actually the king asked them, who are you actually? Because you, you don't seem to be just shopkeepers. And they revealed themselves as disciples of Narottam. And um, actually the king had a dream at night uh, that and uh, the worship of deity was Durga Mata. And Durga Mata came to him and said, you better take shelter of Narottam. He's a pure devotee of my Lord. The Lord I worship, he worships, but he's a pure devotee. So take shelter of him. So in fact, they all took Diksha from uh, Narottam Das Thakur. They surrendered to him. This is a really interesting pastime. Um, now, his two friends, Srinivas and Shyamananda, they went to uh, Vrindavan, but Narottam Das didn't. He stayed in Keturi or in the surrounding area and he just preached, he cultivated devotees. Um, 
Govinda Kaviraj described Narottam as a great king of Prem, divine love, and Ramachandra as Narottam's minister. These two, Narottam and Ramachandra, spent much of their day studying and teaching the Bhagavad Puran. So Bhagavatam was very central to their preaching and the literature of Rupa, Sanatana, and other Goswamis. Since Narottam was a prince of a wealthy state, he was known as Rajkumar in his youth. He had the opportunity to study with some great scholars of the day. Taking advantage of this, Narottam became eloquent and prolific and conveyed all the tenets of Gaudiya Vaishnavism through the medium of poetic language. So he wrote some amazing stuff. Pratna, pra, Prathana, yeah, Pratna. This is a set of 36 Bengali songs, but they're huge. They're divided into 258 verses, arranged in 55 sections. And they deal with so many topics, prayer, self criticism mental training, spiritual happiness, agony of the soul in separation from God, superiority of Vaishnavas, topmost aspirations, guru disciple, residence in Vrindavan, importance of asceticism, humility of a Vaishnava. So many different things. In addition, 27 sections of Pratna focus on Manjari Sadhana, which is the esoteric form of Gaudiya practice in which one visualizes oneself as a servant of Srimati Radharani, since she is very dear to Krishna. This is a secret way to Krishna's heart. So this, this book, uh, we've, we've got a small section of it somewhere, but it'd be amazing to go through some of these bhajans at some point. Maybe we can try to do that in the, the coming uh, months and years, <laughs> if possible. Also important is Narottam's Prema Bhakti Chandrika, a lengthy poem, 120 verses, divided into nine sections that elucidates the Gaudiya philosophy in seed form, like seed like form. This poem has uh, been written after the, has to be written after the first Kathuri festival and the death of his dear friend Ramachandra Kaviraj. Because what happened, Ramachandra, he went to Vandavan and he decided to leave his body there. And that really struck Narottam Das Thakur. Because Srinivas left, Shyamananda left, Ramachandra left, and it just shook him up. Um, in addition to these uh, books, he's written many other poems. Prabhupada was very fond of singing Narottam Das's songs and of quoting him in his literatures, which attests to the abiding value and relevance of Narottam's achievement. And then this is the final bit, Narottam Das Thakur serves Srimati Radhika as Vilas Manjari. There's another name as well given. And his Samadhi is in Ratha Gokulananda's courtyard. This is the beautiful temple, which is near Radha Raman temple. And it's got so many samadhis. It's just a separate area full of samadhis. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur and um, so many other sam uh, samadhis. Sorry? This is in Vandavan, Radha Gokul. Yeah, but they can take the samadhi no? like anywhere. They can put that anywhere. Uh, these are his, this um, is his worshipable Salagram Shila here in Keturi, still being worshipped. I don't know where uh, the deities are, the six that he installed, I'm not sure where they are. I didn't get a chance to look at that. So Narottam Das Thakur Ki Jai. Now Karuna, you were saying you were reading about Narottam. Would you like to share anything? Uh, yes, Prabhu. I was reading more about the different songs that uh, Narutam Hastakur has uh, written about, and a little bit about the life you've just uh, mentioned. There's only one song that uh, I can't find it. It's about Radha and Krishna. I, I must go back to the the different uh, parts of it, but I didn't find it in the, in the song book. No, no. It's there, yeah, it's not in the song because we've got a small part of this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because it's a huge, I mean, it's 
it's, uh, it's, it's divided into so many sections and it deals with so many different areas. But yeah, yeah I, 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 there is something written about Radha and Krishna. I've seen the translation, what he's written. Uh, but that's not in the Pratna either. That's in um, the other book, uh, which is the other book, Prema, Prema Bhakti Chandrika. That's where he's written a lot about Radha Krishna. Okay. So, uh, are you saying that he may have also written in here, Pratna? Uh, let, let me try to get it back. Uh, it's in my phone, so I'll be able oh. to get it. Okay, no, it does say actually Pratna focuses on Manjari Sadhana. Huh. But I read it in um, this Bhakti, Prema Bhakti Chandrika. It's, it's quite a bit in there about, he's written about Ratha Krishna and their, their moods and such amazing, uh, what he's written was so amazing, but I couldn't uh, could get time to put it in. So, uh, what, I, what I read, it's Narutam's writings. Narutam Das is best known for his devotional poetry, wherein he describes emotionally intense feelings towards Radha and Krishna. Mm. His prayer, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada and Sri Guru Charana Padma are still sung. Um, in within both Goryamat and Iskand temples on a regular basis. Among the writings of Ramnurutam Pratna and Prema Bhakti Chandrika, the moon rays of lo loving devotion, are the most well known. Mm. The brief write up titled Hatta Paltana is also attributed to Narutam, but the contents do not seem to be in harmony with the historical events. And thus, some believe that it is a fake work. I don't know. <laughs> Narutam did translate Smarana Mangal into Bengali verse. In 11 shlokas, this work describes the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in eight parts of the day. That's what I was thinking about. Where is it, this mm. 11 shlokas? <laughs> okay. Yeah. There are mentions of different books, but yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Rupa Manjari one, you you've sung that one, haven't you? Yes, yes. The the, gos, the uh, gopis, yeah. Yes, I did sing this one. one. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll try to seek it out. Uh, maybe we'll do Bhakti Vinod Tacos first. It's uh, easier to find, isn't it? Gita, Gita Gitanjali, Gita 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 Gitavali. Yeah. 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 I've got a very old song book that I was given to me, songs of Vaishnava Charyas, you know, and in that there are a lot of Narutam Das Thakur's, even that Hare Harai Nama Krishna. Yeah. That's also. Yes. Yeah, Lala Sayamai, there's Hari He Dayal, mm. yeah, Ekbar Karuna, which Karuna Banda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Prabhupada sings quite, you know, the Hari Hari Nama Krishna Yadavai Namaha. Yeah, there's so many actually. I just thought I would go and find the mm. song book, which was so old. Uh, and there's so many of uh, Narutam Das Thakur's actually. Yeah, that's Which right. one did you, did you say? Yeah, Sri Rupa Manjari Pada. Yeah, that. that uh, is as well. Mm -hmm. I say we, Karuna sang that one. <laughs> yeah. So Brindavan. And then Brindavan itself, like in you know, a Brindavan court. <laughs> Um, yeah. Wow, it's amazing, you know. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, and his style was. Uh, Guru Charana Padma. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's also. Kevala Bhakti. Do you know it? It is, yeah. Guru Charana Padma. Yeah. And the the best the best one that I like is that one um um Vifale Janama Gawai. 
Wasn't that Popeye's best his favorite song? Mm. Mm. Yeah, hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jana was... Magawaya. Yeah, that was Popeye. Manusha Jana oh. Magawaya. Mm. Radha Krishna Nam Bajaya. Mm. That's by Narutam Das Thakur as well. Wow, yeah, amazing. It's good. <laughs> okay. So uh, Karuna is going to be busy for the next few days. Yes, yeah, this. Hmm. <laughs> next few years, this is an incredible treasure we have, you know. Yeah, I, I love the Hari Hari Namo Krishna Yadavai Namo Yadavai Madavai Kesavai Namo. That's hmm. also Narutam Das Thakur, Radha Krishna Prema Mora. Yuga Lucky Shore. That's a yeah. Jivane Marane Gati Aranahimura. That one as well. Mm. Anybody, any yeah. questions or any comments? Good. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Sham. In the yeah, so, um, I what I love of out of his songs is the one from, uh, which says Brindavan. Um, Ramyasthane, the one that I sang last time, that one is mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, yeah. The mood he's singing, how he's describing the petals, how um, all the manjaris are sitting, how Radharani is sitting in the middle, he's narrating that so nicely. Mm. Very good, very good. Okay, so we can uh, stop there. And...